So uh, I'm putting in the final touches. Here it is, just have to sign my name. But this is a collage, a symbolic and abstract piece about my, the people in my life, the very, very special people in my life, my mother and my grandmother and all the women, the aunties and all of them in my life. So I do want to point out uh, another uh, visual element, basic visual element. We talked about dots and lines previously and shapes. And here we also have shapes as well as patterns. Uh, these are all basic uh, uh, elements in visual design. Um, here we have shapes and we have the patterns. So I do want to find out the patterns I've used. I've used patterns here and here, and they kind of bring the whole collage alive. In fact, I've used patterns at the back. I was experimenting with something else, but you know, so that's, it's, there's a lot of experimentation involved um, in art. So uh, pattern here, pattern here, and then I just sprinkled some uh, color uh, to make, to sort of bring it more, um, alive. Um, that is the collage I made for the theme of people, the umbrella theme of people and within that umbrella theme this is a collage um, about a memory of my mother and uh, my grandmother and the other women in my life. Once again we are going to see what my friend Petra has done with the same universal theme. Uh, I keep saying universal, it's an umbrella theme, but it's, you know, universal as well. But the umbrella theme of um, people and activities, uh, I bet you she's done something very different. I tend to do things in the abstract and keep it very simple and sparse. So we'll see what she has done. But again, to summarize, we spent 10 minutes remembering um, and focusing on the theme that we've selected. 10 minutes to write down all the things, what the memory dump, so to speak, and then selecting a few things from there, focusing on the emotions um, and uh, the feeling, activating our senses, and then um, starting to work on the collage. And uh, again, you know, working on the collage, you'll be doing it in all the episodes. So by the end of it, you'll have had enough practice to make a few collages and make your very own visual memory album. But right now, let's go and talk to Petra. Hi, Petra, again. Hello, Krina. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for coming. You know, you've been like, you really got into making collages, huh? With this project. You're liking to make the collages? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah? So this time, uh, we chose the, we selected the umbrella theme of people and uh, we focused on family. So uh, I had asked Petra to work on a collage about this theme of people and in, in, within the theme of people, a smaller category of family. So you've done that, right Petra? Yes. And uh, did you uh, write the memories for 10 minutes? I did. I don't know if it was 10 minutes. Or you did not set the timer. Okay. Oh, okay. All right. That's fine. But yeah. I didn't follow the instruction. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But yeah, I, I put down. Actually, I wrote it in Czech language. <laughs> oh, you just wrote it in the yes, Czech language. I well, did. Okay. Well, that's fine. That's realize. fine. Oh, that's okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you know, I write, I write it in, um, sometimes I write it in my, and I, I write two different languages, so mm -hmm. they're very similar, so I write it in my language too. Yeah, yeah. makes sense, yeah. if you speak different languages. Yeah. So what did you write? I wrote uh, Red Heart, which represents the, the jewel from my father, who had, who inherited it after his mother, who got it from her father, so it's like... Wow, something, so it's a piece of jewelry? Yeah. So. That was like the first thing that came to my mind when I thought of the family. Then I uh, wrote down the cottage, the house, the family house, garden, um, sitting with my dad, um, a division between mom and dad, um, um, cats. Uh, cats are always in cats. Yes, absolutely. That accompanies me from the childhood. Then I have uh, apples, apples in the uh, basement, apples on the trees, apples like everywhere. The the, the um, 
the picture of the apple is something very much connected with my really? family. We were like making juices out of apples. We, we had like several several kinds of apples. You know, yeah, wow. My dad would always tell me this is this kind that is a different kind. He was naming them, and so that's that's very significant thing for me. Then I I wrote down. My grandma, who was always giving me chocolates, yeah. <laughs> and my caring mom, um, how my dad was carrying me from the uh, maternity hospital, very happy. Um, like you said, you were a very wanted child. Yes, right? I was a very wanted child, so I experienced love from the beginning. So I can say that, but the. At the same time, like I realized how how loved and cheerful my life was, but at the same time, like the the mood of the family house or our uh, environment at home was always very like dark and gloomy. I think it's because of the like how the house was set up. Mm -hmm. It was an old house, you mm -hmm. know. So, and also the garden was giving a shade. Shade, okay. So, yeah. that's nice. so you know what I like though very much about uh, what you're doing, Petra, is that you are uh, paying attention to the emotions. Because when you're making something visual, you want to, uh, you know, convey in uh, your, you uh, would express uh, your emotions through pictures. So it's important to attend to them and then find the right way of expressing those emotions or find the colors, for example, to express that emotion. So I'm really glad that you're paying attention to that. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So then I, I was working on some other ideas. I, I mentioned uh, the flower that was growing on our uh, family tomb. It's a periwinkle. Periwinkle. And I was, um, I meant I put that down because my father lost his mom when he was a very young man. Mm -hmm. And this way he was very connected to the family tomb. Mm -hmm. He was going there very often. Family grave, you mean? The, yes. The grave, yeah, 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 yeah. The graveyard. So we spent a lot of time there too. So I wanted to put it there somehow. So, right, right. Um, and then I, I sort of sketched the first thing, mm -hmm. and I had like you, know, you again make a small sketch, right? Like yeah. you did in the other picture too. Yeah, but it's also different from yeah. the result because first I had that jewelry made out of apples. Oh, oh, I so, see what you're doing, like yeah, a little heart, yes, yeah. like a heart yeah. made out of apples. Yeah, that was, that's in the sketch. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, but then mm -hmm. I went to the magazine. Yes, and I searched the search. I found some some other things though that. But you didn't find the heart shaped jewelry. No, so uh, I see. And also like. Or you didn't find the apples also. No, yeah, yeah. I, I found apples. I didn't like them at all. Uh, they were not like uh, the apples are very uh, bright there. In the memory, if I realized things, the apples are the, the brightest. Like every, every apple has different color, but and you didn't find the right apples. No, and no. you didn't find the right jewelry in the images. No, no, I didn't. <laughs> yeah, see, so that's a, so that's the thing. Uh, you actually draw out what you want to, which memories you want to share, mm -hmm. and then you go to the magazines to look for the pictures. Mm -hmm. And I found some other you pictures. Found. So, the, so that's why I don't even. Go. So many times what I do is I just write the memories and then I just go, I don't draw it out. I just go to the magazines and I just start looking to see if any of the pictures match the memories. So I don't go with the idea in my head, whereas you go with the idea in your head that you're looking for apples. Whereas I'm not looking for apples, I'm just looking to see if I can find something that will match my memories, you know. So that's, that's interesting. Both strategies work really well. So you should try out all these strategies, um, all these different ways of um, figuring out a way to um, match an image with your memory, right? So you did that and you were successful. What, what did you do? Well, First, you, you did make a bigger sketch. Though, I when see. I 
found some pictures. Oh, after this, after yeah. this, okay. I, uh, yeah, so I, I found some pictures and I did the sketch. Okay, you found some pictures and you did the sketch, I yeah. see. You found, you found pictures of the flowers? So that's the, uh, the thing I actually printed. Oh, you look to, oh, that, that, so that is yeah. a really, uh, 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 let me um, invite the people who are working with us, mm -hmm. the artists who are working with us to also um, do something that you've done. And that is you can go to Google and um, do an image search. Uh, or you can go to, did you know, Petra, that there is a website, for example, there are free websites that offer you free images. So there is a website that I go to a lot called Unsplash. Uh, and so if you go to Unsplash, it, they, they say, free beautiful images and I was looking for an image for example in for me I was looking for an image of Calcutta the city where I was born and voila there were so many beautiful images of Calcutta and they're free not we can look at magazines old magazines catalogs newspapers and you can look for images on the internet and print them out if you have a printer with access to a printer you can print them out as well so that's what you did that's what I did. Yeah. So you, before you put uh, put the pictures down, you actually again made this another sketch, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you were really planned. Yes, but then like certain things just don't. Yeah, it's like when you look at those magazines and you see those random things that suddenly like catch you. Then I realized, like for example, the thing here. Oh, let me see. In the so now corners, you now you have, yes yeah. There, that was very interesting because I found this like, um, I don't know, it looks like color samples Yes With some words inside Yes And I realized like, it it says for example, um, shake, apply, um, bait throw, ethics apply It was all connected with some kind of work mm -hmm. My dad was an architect and also a carpenter mm -hmm. and we worked with the wood all the time at home. Mm -hmm. It was something that like framed all my life with my family mm -hmm. and that we worked on something. We, we were so active and um, we were creating all the time. So, uh, and those samples, they are in the corner as as in the real life because every corner of the of our house was filled with certain samples color samples of oh, different because materials. Your materials because your dad was an architect yes. and your mother was also an architect she was, yeah yeah they was also an architect yes, yeah, yes, yeah, yes. yeah so that's very interesting what i love about uh, how you compose your pictures is you actually think about the frame so you always say that you're not an artist and and I you know I, I again I want to emphasize that you don't have to be an artist to make collage but you have a general sense you know and um, I think that you come from with a general sense that something should be framed so you think of the framing like in the other uh, collage you did you were thinking of the triangle frame of the swings and in this you have a formal frame tell me more like I know that you talked about the colored pieces that were lying around in your every mm -hmm. corner of your house mm -hmm. so you put them on literally in the corner yes. of your yes. <laughs> uh, of your picture and then you have this wood on the yes house. I was looking for some planks or something but I actually found a beautiful picture of um, trees mm -hmm. Big trees, so uh -huh. I cut them into plants, and I just <laughs> put them there. You just see, you know something, Petra. Uh, so, in this project, you're only using paper, mm -hmm. but collage can also be three D, like two D and three D. I, I showed a, I, I love this artist. Uh, his name is Ortiz. Last name is Ortiz. Mm -hmm. Jesus Ortiz, and it's uh, he does. He has two flowers, you know, for heads. And then he uses just simple light drawing to make a body. So they look like two people saying hello to each other. And he uses everyday objects um, to make that. So combining, and then I think it also, he photographs them. But you can actually also stick a real flower or a real piece of wood to make the frame, right? But you, you, you cut it into planks. <laughs> yes, I cut it into planks. And uh, there's another wooden thing here. This mm -hmm. looks like a barn or something. Yes. But it's actually the something I didn't plan on the uh, on the initial picture, but I just when I saw it, I, I felt like 
it, it, it's gonna give some light that, that was there always like yes even though the house was gloomy because yeah. it was an old yeah. house and there was a lot of shade from the garden there were still pockets of light and yeah. these are the representing that absolutely and there is the fire because also like we were making bonfires all the time oh. and we were having like the heating we used was like real uh, real wood things yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but so you had the fire is it cold during the cold, winter months you mean winter months are yeah. cold yeah. yeah yeah and i see that you were so disappointed with that uh, photographs of the apples that you decided to make your own. Yes, I did. <laughs> you just I cut did. out from red paper? Yeah, oh. yeah. I found some, it was also like a piece of magazine, I guess some ad or something and I cut it into apples. And, uh, so you just cut it, yeah, because cut. you were very, I remember you told me that the apples were so, in your memory the apples are so bright mm -hmm. red and they're so different that none of the photographs, no. So instead of being representational, you actually did uh, symbolic apples, like mm -hmm. the shape of apples. They look like representation. They look like apples to me. Yeah, yeah. And they're bright. They're bright. It would be so gloomy without. Yeah. Uh, and I love that cat. She's hanging upside down mm -hmm. over there. <laughs> yeah, she's like she's walking or Yeah, yeah. And these are the periwinkles. The, the periwinkles and the stones. The the stones in the graveyard. Yeah. Yeah. The bricks and stones, like uh, uh, in the background of. Yeah, bricks are in the background. It's also like something connected with my family that we were, um, our house was made of bricks and we were all the time working with bricks, repairing the, uh, let's say the fence or repairing the sidewalks there or something. Still, still creating, rebuilding so with our you, hands. You have to mention the sky, you have the sky there. And I have the sky because we just, loved watching stars together. Oh, the whole family would watch stars together? Yeah, all the time. I remember once I, I told my dad, oh, I think I see a shooting star. It was not a shooting star, but when my dad looked, there was a shooting star oh. at that moment. <laughs> so that was, it was very nice that I, I pointed and there. And there it was, yes. like magic, huh? <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I think that you did a great job with the composition, you framed it. You paid attention to the shapes, you paid attention to the colors. So you have the basic elements of visual art right there. Lines, shape, color, pattern, the way the, uh, the uh, stones are, there's a pattern there. Um, so you've covered like the basics of visual art in this composition. <laughs> well, thank you very much. Now I really have to tell you mine too. Okay, so show I'll show you mine. Show me, show me. Yes, yes, I'll show you. Um, so I did um, same theme, we both selected the same theme uh, and, and it's interesting how different our pieces are, you know, here's mine and here's hers. We have two very different pieces um, and my piece um, uh, is about my mother, mm -hmm. right? So, you know, I grew up in Calcutta and Calcutta is um, on the east coast of India and um, the sun rises early so it's very bright because it's very warm as you know many parts of india not all of india but many parts of india are warm and Calcutta happens to be on the uh, near the sea uh, and um, on the easternmost part of india so the sun rises early and floods used to flood my bedroom and my mother used to so very different from yours because your house was kind of gloomy and dark my house was really bright and uh, sunny and um, my mother used to wake up very early like um, um, you know I also made a long list first mm -hmm. and then I decided to focus on my mother's memory because she would wake up very early in the morning because she had to take care of me and my sister and my brother um, my father and then um, you know her, her mother lived nearby so her mother and then she was also very active as a social worker, so she had so many different commitments. So she had to wake up very early to get her work done. And um, and she would always wear these cotton saris. You know, we wear saris in India, and she would wear these cotton saris, and they would be very nicely ironed and starched. And um, she would um, come to the bedroom to wear it. 
and I would still be sleeping and I'd be always like, I'm so lucky that I get to sleep longer. <laughs> I feel like you feel comfort and safe because you're sleeping and you're having a good time and you don't have to wake up and she would wake up and she would be getting wearing her sari. And I still remember the smell of beauty cologne. I just love that smell. There is this beauty cologne that um, she would wear and I you know, that smell brings me straight back to that moment when she used to wear the sari. Mm -hmm. And so the sari has pleats in the front, mm -hmm. and so I had the pleats. I see that. Wear, yeah. And, um, and then, you know, she would wear cotton saris, like I said. So I actually did the background of uh, tracing paper. Mm -hmm. um, so it's background of tracing paper, which is like symbolic of the sari. Yeah. And then the pattern in the, the saris printed. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a very Indian pattern, as you can see, but kind of Indian, not really. Mm -hmm. uh, but this pattern is very Indian. And I know uh, this came, I found this piece of paper. Um, I had these old um, and, um, papers that I was cleaning out my closet and I found these old papers and uh, I brought them here with me. And this is a piece of that paper. So they come from India? Yeah, they come from okay. India. And okay. this very old paper, I just found it when I was cleaning out my um closet in India and I just brought it here thinking I might use it someday and here we are using it in a collage and uh, so that and that that pattern is very typical of the western part of India where we are originally from though we lived in the east mm -hmm. so that is uh, a print of that kind of pattern that is very common in the western part of India and then I just put these little dots on top you know as a as a we have pops of color mm -hmm. but also like Fragments of memory or mm -hmm. fragments of a dream, fragments of an early morning dream. So it's a very soft sort of um, memory of dawn and the mother and mm -hmm. that kind of thing. Does it have any sign um, like uh, significance, like those? And there's some meaning. Yeah, yeah. I, I think it reminds me. So yes, very really good. I'm glad you asked the question because um, it reminds me of uh, what uh, in um, the western part of India, like mm -hmm. I said, where my ancestors are from. Although I was born in the east part, like um, it's like you know somebody like Emma being born in mm -hmm. Boston, but you're originally from California, that kind of thing. So I was opposite coast. So on the western part of India, where my grandparents were from, um, they have this style of. Um, uh, Textile, um, they make uh, uh, tie and dye. It's like a tie mm -hmm. and dye, but it's called bandhani, and it's basically tie and dye. And usually, it's also in red and white. So, I mean, often it's in red and white. And red and white is also the color when you wear when you get married. So, my mother, you know, is you know, symbolizing my mother as a married woman. Mm -hmm. So, it all worked out because that's why that's why I love going through the materials and then saying, okay, I'll make a story from these materials. And that's that's what we are doing it, and what we are doing it is actually drawing it out and then doing it. So I went with the strategy of looking at my memories of my mother, and then looking at the materials I had and seeing how you know the memories can mm -hmm. take a visual form. Mm -hmm. And I I don't have a frame, but it's kind of a frame because I have a background that yeah. frames it. Yeah. I have a background of that. You can't see it. It's so mm -hmm. so flip. You know, so light. There's a background. And then the frame is like on top only, just the top is framed and the bottom is like... Mm -hmm. And I see like one of those pieces is like very contrasting mm -hmm. while the other one is like so uh, smooth and yeah. like gentle. Yeah. And you know, it's part of the composition and how mm -hmm. you bring it together, mm -hmm. how you bring the image together. But what I'd love for people to see is how different they both are. Like here is mine, which is very kind of sparse, like you said, and uh, my you said to me that knowing you, you will have a very simple design. Mm -hmm. And so I have to show you that other piece as yes, well, yes, right? Yes. Uh, and, and, and then yours is a little bit more crowded, you know, not yeah. very crowded, but it still has a lot of different things in it. Yeah, like different things put together while you, you focus on one. One thing, yeah. one just one person. Yeah. And uh, I use the colors to sort of say, to in you know, an abstract, so my work is also more abstract sometimes, you know, because for me it was the smell of the Yudi cologne. So doing an abstract piece made a lot of sense because you cannot really um, show a picture. I mean, one way I could do it was to take a photograph of the perfume bottle, Yudi cologne bottle, and put the 
photo here, mm -hmm. that will be representational. Mm -hmm. So I, as I said, there are three ways, representational, symbolic, and abstract, and also a combination of it. So I think in this case, mine is a combination of symbolic and abstract. I also see that you were, uh, some pieces you were tearing. Tearing, yes. And some you were cutting. Cutting, yes, and yes, good point. Because you can either tear the papers or you can cut them. Uh, I noticed that you mostly cut out, mostly, although you yeah. did some, did some tear over here. Some, some tear, tear some tear here, yeah. 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 Even on the other one, yeah. Yeah, you did tear and cut. Mm -hmm. I, I mostly tore. In this one, I actually only tore. Mm -hmm. And you know, some artists use that also symbolically. Like mm -hmm. if they are doing a collage of some kind of a issue, they want to like if they want to show something ruptured then they kind of tear it mm -hmm. and um, some artists just cut out so um, different ways again you can tear cut or do a combination all, all the different ways well thank you again for coming and now i think you're on a roll i think you're going to keep making collages right <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> yeah there's so many themes you can choose from yeah. right i mean right. the main ones i already said significant events people places seasons of your life, objects or activities, and you can just go on your whole life. But you know, that, that's very important. It's not a collage of just all your life in one collage. Mm -hmm. It's incidents in your life or experiences in your life. I always say one experience, two experience, three experience, four experience, and then you bring it together, like, mm -hmm. like your other collage, like make it together, you know, the other collage, and you can make an album with five or six different collages mm -hmm. and it will be like a album of the story of your life. That's true. Right? That's, that could be absolutely used as a beautiful family memory. Yeah. Uh, to do to do that, like five or six, maybe ten, and have an album of family memories or an um, album of the story of your family. So I hope you are working alongside us and making an album and sharing the story of your family. And again, it's not your entire life, but, you know, select incidents and experiences of um, at particular times in your life.